Hey, this is Kathy Brennan. Hope everyone is doing well this winter. I am doing great. I'm very excited because my hair is approaching spectacular pony hair. So that makes me very excited. I wanted to do a very short video about men in the military. Why? Do you ask? I bet you anyone who's been paying attention to transgenderism for the last little bit will know where I'm going with this. Um, there is a loud contingent of men who are in the military and have decided that they are now women or trans non-binary. So, <laughs> where do I start? Here's one thing. Anyone who has a progressive agenda, don't ask, don't tell, was not high on your list. So don't ask, don't tell was a very key issue for mainstream gay rights groups for many, many years until don't ask, don't tell for gay people was repealed. So those of us who considered ourselves to be progressive in the gay rights movement thought, why are we advocating for inclusion in the military when we stand opposed to the military industrial complex? So that's one thing. Put a pin in that. There are numerous very uh, prominent transgender women who were very active around Don't Ask, Don't Tell. The number one man I can think of is Steve Sandine, who goes by Autumn Sandine. So Autumn is a man, I think Autumn was in the Navy, and then he decided he thought he was a woman. And so Don't Ask, Don't Tell was something that he worked on a lot, uh, even though Don't Ask, Don't Tell was about sexual orientation and not about gender identity. Um, there are other transgender women slash non-binary males who did work around Don't Ask, Don't Tell. And I want to talk about one of them right now because he's very obsessive with women and it's strange to me because he's he's a gay man so he was expelled from the military because he publicly declared himself to be a homosexual he's a man that goes by ian finkenbinder i think is his name um he calls himself ian awesome and he's a very sassy gay who seems to be alcoholic and has other mental health issues based on his public Facebook postings. And he was expelled from the military because he declared himself to be gay. Um, and so there was a series of, you can Google his name and find, he speaks Arabic. So there was a lot of coverage about the lack of Arabic translators uh, when our military was and continues to. Um, I'm trying not to have a commentary on war, but you know, we've gone to war in the Middle East and we didn't have a lot of Arabic translators. And there's there's been numerous gay people who were Arabic translators and who were expelled under Donas Hotel and Ian is one of them. So there's a traje trajectory and my observations are anecdotal. I would anticipate that at some point in the future, someone will do actual data studies on this and look at the intersections of military service um, or like willingness to dedicate yourself to a cult, put it, maybe that's a different way to put it, maybe biased, I don't know, um, and transgenderism. So Ian is one of them. Uh, Charles Clymer is another one of them. Um, 
there's there was a guy a couple of years ago, Laurel Isle Bailey, Wesley Bailey, who was in the army. Someone named Nova, Zoe Wolf, who you know posted about having sex with minors, like just like these like really gross men who engaged in you know this hyper masculine activity of joining the army joining the military many of them recount they did this to prove to themselves they were men Kristen beck is a navy seal who like has made a lot of money for himself by peddling this story i shared with um the fantastic lesbian who uploads these videos a bunch of links which are hope hopefully below this is like a well documented thing that transgender women many times have military service and the task force has a study that says that trans people are two times more likely to serve in the military now honestly i'm not sure how their data is always suspect it's not really statistically valid in my view but this is their study so let's come back to ian so ian kicked out of the military in like the the mid 2000s maybe 2000 or maybe 2002 2005 like sometime and he like many of these other men becomes enraged and they engage in a series of events that involve protest 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 so a lot of times they're active in the occupy movement they become attracted to queer theory and i'm you know it's this like constantly edgy i'm so edgy i want to make straight people uncomfortable blah 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 and it's very stereotypically masculine. Like it's stereotypically masculine to like make people like uncomfortable and assert like boundaries that include other people and just overreach. And this has been a thing in the gay community and gay rights activism since forever which is why we talk about stonewall as like the defining event of gay liberation and it ignores the work of many 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 people including lesbians that you know we did our work quietly <laughs> quietly and relentlessly like it takes a certain kind of person to throw a beer bottle through a window that person's probably an alcoholic Ian is probably an alcoholic I would also suggest that a lot of these guys have PTSD I'm assuming I don't have to have anyone post links about PTSD and military service. I think that probably speaks for itself. So getting back to Ian. Ian first came on my radar because he targeted deep green resistance at an event in the Pacific Northwest, which the Pacific Northwest is a beautiful part of the country. But God, there are some idiotic people out there that have no boundaries, no respect for other people, and believe it's their like divine right or cause to call people out. This is call out culture. So you have, you know, these like military dudes. By the way, there's like a lot of military bases out in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, and I guess not coincidentally, isn't Portland, like the headquarters of porn and strip clubs in the United States. Toxic masculinity. So Ian decided that deep green resistance was transphobic and he um, engaged in an assault on several women that were tabling and he denied it and I think he threatened to sue me for 
libel, which never happened because it never happens. But he, you know, decided that I needed to be called out and I'm a big mean bully. Now, you have these military guys and a lot of these military guys, they're trying to prove they're like hyper-masculine, they're male, they follow orders, they're mission-driven. You have transgenderism, which is also fundamentalist, dogmatic, mission-driven. The mission here is to obliterate critical thinking and women's space and woman as a noun. So Ian apparently engaged in some online battle with me, which I guess makes sense if you are an alcoholic suffering from PTSD. And by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with being an alcoholic suffering from PSTD, PSTD post-traumatic PTSD. I'm dyslexic. Um, like we all have our struggles. I'm just trying to paint a picture of the type of people who are engaging in all of this agitation. So they're bitter, angry, dysfunctional, and they have time because a lot of times they don't have jobs or they're underemployed. So you have all these ex-military dudes leaving the military and somehow deciding they're trans. So Ian is a non-binary trans person now, which I'm not really sure how that works. And I don't care because he's a man. And he's continuing his calling out culture to the point where apparently he's getting women fired. So we've reached a point where you have these aggrieved ex-military, these aggrieved veterans who are angry and unfulfilled and are going out there to wreak havoc on the lives of women. Of course, the most famous of all of these military trans is Bradley Manning, who is greeted as a hero in many progressive circles for releasing indiscriminately classified information. Now, again, I don't need to get into an argument with anybody about whether what he did was right, because that's not really relevant. I just want to call attention to the fact that joining the military is not a progressive act. There are plenty of women that I've known and men who joined the military because they didn't have an option for college otherwise or they didn't see another path for them and they served and they're ambivalent about it. I've never met a single person outside of the gay community that viewed their military service as some like somehow progressive, politically progressive action. They viewed it as a necessary action in their personal development or their path, but not as a progressive action. And some of those people have advocated around don't ask, don't tell as a matter of fairness. And as a matter of fairness, not as progressive action, but as a matter of fairness, I, you know, I get it. But if we are positioning ourselves, Mr. Ian, awesome, as progressives, I think you need to do some critical examination of who you are. Because who you are is a person who joined the military, was kicked out, did activism around Don't Ask, Don't Tell, called yourself a progressive, and then adopted an ideology, you were kicked out of the military for being gay, which means you're a man who likes to suck other men's things. And now you've adopted an ideology that demands that lesbians change our sexuality. What 
is going on in your crazy little fag head? I really don't get it. And, you know, these men become obsessed and obsessed and obsessed. And they're just spinning. And it, this is the point I want to make. This has been kind of a rambling video. And I think that it's important to hold two thoughts in one's head for me. One is I have deep compassion for Ian Awesome. It's got to be awful to live like that. So that's one piece. The other thing is people like that should not have the ability to influence the life of women, period. They should not. And whether that influence comes in the form of getting someone fired from a job or advocating for legislation, that means that homeless women will be housed with males or women in prison will be housed with males. These are the people who are influencing this discussion. And we're not allowed for some reason that has never been explained to me, we're not allowed to peek behind the curtain and look and see who these people are. We're just supposed to trust in it and accept. And if you don't, you're a big old fake goth. So I think that's all I'm going to say. I don't have a lot of free time to devote to this kind of thing, but I wanted to make this point. Other women have made this point. There are tons of resources on trans women and military service. Um, there was a blogger, um, Davina Squirrel, who has a blog called Twansphobic Since Forever. She is, She's made this point. Um, also pointing out a lot of these guys are in IT, which is true. So there's a lot more that can be said on this topic, but I want to encourage you as you are waging fierce feminist thought against stupidity, that maybe there's a little room for compassion for people like Ian. Because, you know, him calling me names on the internet is nothing to me. And the suffering that he has as a person walking around on the planet seems pretty intense. That doesn't mean I think he's a woman because he's not. And it doesn't mean that I think transgenderism is a good ideology because it's not. Transgenderism is as progressive as advocating for the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. See ya.